Oh, hey everyone. So, I thought we would have a look at the ontological argument today, and I've got quite a nice video which I want to kind of go through and debunk some of, so I guess we'll just jump right into the video. In the year 1078, a monk named Anselm of Canterbury astonished the world by arguing that if it is even possible that God exists, then it follows logically that God does exist. Anselm's argument came to be called the ontological argument. So, first of all, there's all kinds of, well, there's all kinds of unproven theories which you would actually have to believe in order to, you know, follow this logically. So, um, I'll go through the video just so you guys can, you know, get more of an idea of what I'm talking about here. But, um, but I'd just let you guys, you know, I mean, the word, keyword there is possible, okay? And it has sharply divided philosophers ever since. The 19th century German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer called it a charming joke. But many prominent 20th century philosophers, such as Charles Hartshorn, Norman Malcolm, and Alvin Plantinga, think that it's sound. Here it is. God can be defined as a maximally great being. So, that's the first concept, um, a maximally great being, okay? Now, as far as I'm concerned, such a thing can't exist because I guess I'm more of a um, relativist. So, for example, um, a god can't do impossible things. So, for example, you it's going to argue this, but you can't have... For example, a married bachelor, okay, that's like a logical impossibility. So there are limits to what God can do already. So a maximally great being, um, it's kind of a problematic concept. If something were greater than God, then that being would be God. Okay, so that's kind of a very strange thing to say. So if God, the Christian God, for example, existed, and then it was discovered, hypothetically, that there was something greater than the Christian God. Then the Christian God would cease to be God. I mean, is that the argument here? I mean, surely if something qualifies as a God, then it's a God. I mean, this is kind of a um, monotheist idea, I guess. But, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a strange concept, isn't it? And in order to be maximally great, a maximally great being would have to be all-powerful, all-knowing, and morally perfect in- Okay, another massive problem here is moral perfection. Now, like I said, I'm more of a moral relativist, I guess, so in other words, you could say, is it wrong to kill? Now, a morally perfect being might say, yes, it's wrong to kill. But would it be wrong to kill baby Hitler? Now, you could argue, yes, it's wrong to kill baby Hitler. But the point is, that's sort of an opinion. So being morally perfect, it's... I don't think there's such a thing as morals external to the human mind. So, again, I don't think um, a morally perfect being could exist. I mean, I could say I'm a morally perfect being in my view, and of course I'm not, <laughs> but you know, I could argue that, and who's to argue against me? I mean, um, I, I guess I'm more of a relativist. Anyway, I just thought, out, thought I'd point that out. In every possible world. Possible worlds are simply ways the world could have been. So, possible worlds are the way the world could have been. I guess, um, in the modern world, we sort of think about the multiple universe or infinite universe theory for every single action that we could take or every single particle collision in the universe could um, happen a different way and that would actually effectively mean that there were an infinite number, number of universes. Well, in the world of mathematics, if you find yourself reaching infinity, then it usually means that you've gone wrong somewhere. So, I, I don't know, I take that that idea with a big grain of salt. But anyway, the 
I think the video he talks about is going to be charmingly ridiculous. Um, let's have a little look. To say that something exists in a possible world is just to say that if the world were that way, then the thing would have existed. For example, even though unicorns don't exist in the actual world, it seems at least possible that they could have. So we can say that unicorns exist in some possible world. Again, universe, unicorns, as far as we know, don't exist in any possible world. In fact, we don't even know that possible worlds exist. Um, the only thing that we know for sure is that our world exists. And I'm not talking about the planet, I'm talking about possible realities. So again, these are completely unprovable concepts. Um, I mean, to prove that there's a, a universe that's different from, from ours, we would actually have to visit that universe or, you know, somehow detect that it exists. And even if it does exist, this argument is, you know, really flawed. Um, I'll explain why in a minute. On the other hand, a married bachelor does not exist in any possible world because the idea of a married bachelor is logically incoherent. It could not possibly exist. So if it is possible that a maximally great being exists, then we can say that he exists in some possible world. Again, you're kind of assuming that possible worlds exist. Um, I mean, this goes back to the um, root of philosophy. Um, you're talking about Aristotle and Plato. Um, where they argued that the world was the best possible version of itself because, um, again, I think that reasoning is really flawed. If you imagine a jelly, okay, um, and the jelly's been sat in a mould um, and it kind of forms into the shape of that mould, let's say it's a rabbit, for example, the jelly would argue that God must exist because, look, um, it was the perfect shape, um, it doesn't realise that, um, the jelly doesn't realise that it's being moulded by the mould to actually be a certain way. It's kind of the same with humans. We, um, we think, well, God must exist because, well, there's an argument that's a bit ridiculous. Um, a banana is the perfect shape for a human hand to hold, okay? And obviously this is God's work. Um, of course, we've actually evolved bananas to be like they are, which, um, which is kind of vaguely hilarious, but yeah, this argument completely breaks down. We are the jelly. We are not the mould. We have moulded to this planet, okay? Um, not the other way around. But wait, a maximally great being would not really be maximally great if it existed in only some possible worlds. To be maximally great, it has to be all-powerful, all-knowing, and morally perfect in every possible world. Again, massive problem. If you look at um, science fiction, then what you often find is morals in different universes are different. And who's to say that one version of morality is better than another? I certainly wouldn't dare say that this version of reality, or morality, sorry, is perfect. And this version is, what, imperfect, I guess? Um, so you can't have a morally perfect being to start off with. All-knowing. You see, my problem with all-knowing from a philosophical point of view is can you know your own mind, okay? So can an all-knowing being know its own mind? Um, if it could know its own mind, then its mind presumably exists within the universe, okay? It, it kind of creates some um, an infinite loop, right? It, so if, if it can know its own mind, then within its own mind, exists the universe okay because it's all knowing and presumably within that universe already within its own mind there exists another mind and another universe this kind of creates a uh, sort of infinity problem again you've kind of said that um again an all knowing being could not know itself basically by definition so shall we carry on so think about it. If a maximally great being exists in any possible world, then it exists in every possible world. Again, we're assuming that possible worlds are actually a thing, which, you know, there's no... You could argue um, from a scientific point of view that possible other worlds exist, but 
you know, I've actually seen no evidence that they actually do. This theory just kind of assumes that there are other possible worlds. And who knows if they're talking about universes, um, as in everything, uni meaning everything, or if they're just talking about planets, but um, well, let's assume they're talking about everything. Um, there's no guarantee that there are other possible worlds. So this whole thing breaks down, as far as I'm concerned, fair. And if it exists in every possible world, then it exists in the actual world. That is, a maximally great being actually exists. Thus, the atheist has to maintain not simply that God does not exist, but that it is impossible that God exists. Again, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that assertion, because... There are plenty of things which could potentially exist, but we don't know that they actually do. We don't know that imagining something exists makes it, it real, right? Um, I mean, that's um, a very, very, very unproven and fanciful claim. But if I can imagine Pokemon, then Pokemon must exist. Because I, I can imagine them. So, <laughs> I don't know, as far as I'm concerned, it just completely breaks down. Here's a summary of the ontological argument. Steps two through six are straightforward and largely uncontroversial. But what about point number one? Clearly, if it can be shown that the idea of a god is logically incoherent, then the argument fails. But is the idea of a maximally great being absurd? Like a married bachelor, or a square circle, or the smell of blue? Yes. And by the way, blue does have a smell. Some people with, um, synesthesia Syn let me get this word right synesthesia actually smell the colour blue for example so it does have a smell it's not an absurd concept this doesn't seem to be the case the notion of an all powerful all knowing morally perfect being that exists in every possible world seems to be a perfectly coherent idea ok well what about this if an all powerful being could destroy itself, then according to the ontological argument, then in some version of reality, the all-powerful being has destroyed itself, after all it's all-powerful, and therefore God does not exist, you know? This is using the same kind of logic as the ontological argument, which is deeply flawed. But couldn't we parody this argument and make it work for anything? Why not say, it's logically possible that a maximally great pizza exists. Therefore, a maximally great pizza does exist. However, the idea of a maximally great pizza is not like the idea of a maximally great being. In the first place, there aren't intrinsic maximal values that make pizzas great. And I've argued there are no maximal values that would make a god exist. For example, having the perfect morality if morality is indeed just something that exists in the minds of people, then you can't maximally have that concept. And I am very firmly of the belief that morality is just something that we generate ourselves and that it doesn't exist external to ourselves. So, for example, there's, there's a little tiny parasite which can... Um, enter the eyeball of a snail, okay, and it can control the snail, and it'll make the um, snail get eaten by a bird. Now, you could say, what's, where's the morality? So, the organism that takes over the snail has a kind of morality in the sense that it wants to use the snail um, to get eaten so that it can, you know, reproduce, okay? Um, the snail as, in a sense, a different morality of say I wants to go and eat some grass or, you know, some leaves. Um, you could say that morality only applies to humans, but it doesn't change the problem. Some human beings have um, moralities that suit them, and who's to say which morality is best? Um, is a sort of Christian Western morality superior to... Um, let's say a Chinese morality, or is indeed a Chinese morality superior to a Western um, morality, for example. Um, I, As far as I'm concerned, you can look at outcomes, which one has the best benefit, but you can't say for sure which one is maximally best. 
There could always be one more pepperoni to increase its greatness. That's the same with God. You know, um, a God could always be a little bit more powerful. It's not even obvious what properties make a pizza great. Well, exactly. Some, we, there are, um, there's something like 5,000 different kinds of, or there's something like 5,000 different religions in the world which are currently active. So, again, who's to say which um, understanding, which version of God is actually real? Um, and <clears throat> if they have conflicting ideas about what makes a good God, which they do, when you can't argue that one is necessarily better than another, and you can't argue that it must be maximally good. Or, indeed, any other attribute. Thin crust or thick crust, extra cheese, anchovies? It's relative to the taste of the consumer. In the Just like God. Second place, a maximally great pizza would have to exist in every logical possible world. But that would mean that it couldn't be eaten. So it wouldn't really be a pizza, because a pizza is something you can eat. The idea of a maximally great pizza turns out not to be a coherent idea. The idea of God, on the other hand, is an intuitively coherent idea. No, it isn't. <clears throat> Honestly, there are 7 billion people on the planet. The majority of them believe in some kind of religion. A lot of them believe in some kind of God. And <laughs> there is no consistent idea of what God is like, or what it should be like, or what they are like. It's not in any way intuitive or coherent. Um, <clears throat> if you believe in, for example, Thor or Odin, then as far as you're concerned, that belief is completely intuitive and coherent. But it doesn't necessarily mean that someone who worships Ra, for example, um thinks that, you know, the, the initial gods are sort of intuitive or coherent. Therefore, his existence is a possibility. And the ontological argument shows that... I love how they said his existence. <clears throat> so you're going to say there's a perfect being and it has happens to have a male gender. I mean, okay, fine. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. What even makes a male? Honestly, is it biology? Biology, or oh, I'll leave that up to you, audience. If God possibly exists, then God actually exists. Okay, guys. So I'll leave a link to the original video, but um, I I kind of think to a large extent I've kind of debunked that but I'll, I'll leave it for you guys to to decide on that argument but um i just want to say that the search for the truth is something i really really believe in and other people will search for the truth too and will come up with different solutions but i think a lot of the time it's the search that's important so thank you very much guys and like and subscribe etc and thank you very much